Today I'm going to be baking a simple loaf of sourdough bread. So I've only been doing sourdough for a couple months, but I'm starting to really feel confident about doing it and the loaves are turning out great, so can't complain about that. I use the recipe from the Prairie Homestead. It's a really simple beginner sourdough bread recipe, which is perfect for me as I'm just starting out and I have no complaints about the results. So I'll link that in the description box if you'd like to check out her recipe as well. So I'm gonna double this today because I'd like to make two loaves to be able to give one to a friend. So keep in mind that I am doubling the recipe if this seems like a lot of dough. But we're going to start with one cup of active starter. So here's my starter. It bubbled up beautifully last night. If you can see, actually turn it this way, if you can see where the line is, that is where I started. And then all night it bubbled and definitely doubled in size. So it is bubbly. Smells fantastic. Can't wait to have some bread with this. to get starter out of a measuring cup. Any of you who do sourdough bread probably have some problem, but we'll get most of it. Good enough. All right, so after that comes two and a half cups of lukewarm water. Um, so make sure that it's not really cold water because that's not gonna help the starter. Also, if you're familiar with the float test, that's how you tell if your sourdough starter is ready. So I didn't really do it right. However, my sourdough starter is floating in the water. So it means it's ready to, to rock and roll and make some bread. All right, and now we're gonna do six cups of flour. Again, doubling the recipe. So I know that seems like a lot of flour and I'm just using all purpose. six. Fills my bowl up quite a bit. <laughs> All right, next is salt. And I'm going to do three teaspoons. All right, so that's all my ingredients. I'm going to use my dough hook, which just is a really great mixing tool if you're doing bread, and mix everything up. Being very careful to not overflow off the side since my bowl is very full. However, I love this bowl. This is an antique milk glass bowl that I picked up at a local antique shop and it's just the perfect size. It's just beautiful, works great. So I'm really, really pleased with it. So sourdough bread baking, while well, yes, you're gonna follow a recipe and want to make sure that you follow that recipe pretty closely as with any baking. There is an element of feel involved as well and you're going to be able to tell if the recipe feels too dry or too wet and you need to kind of adjust as needed. So my dough is feeling just a little drier than I would generally prefer. So I'm going to give it just another, another second. All right, now I'm happy with the consistency of my dough. It feels more right. So I'm going to just let it sit in this bowl for 30 minutes. That's going to be its first rest. So I'll cover it with a little clean tea towel just to keep it protected. And then I'm going to walk away for about 30 minutes. I'm going to clean up my kitchen and then we're going to come back and complete the next step. Welcome back. Our 30 minute rest is done. So now our next step is going to be a stretch and fold. So this is something that I've um, gotten better at, but I still don't feel super confident about. So if you are wanting to get started with sourdough bread and there's something that makes you a little bit nervous, like maybe the stretching and folding portion, you know, just do it. The bread still turns out good in you know my experience. So I'm flouring a surface a little bit because otherwise it's gonna stick to everything. <laughs> 
just like Bretto does. I should move that. You have to be able to see, right? Sometimes I'll do this in the bowl, but because I have so much dough this time, since I'm doubling my batch, um, it's easier to do it on the counter. So this is how I do the stretch and fold. Everyone does it a little bit different, but this seems to work for me. So I kind of pick it up, stretch it out with a shake, and then fold it down over itself. And you can kind of see how it starts to really come together more so than it was when I just, you know, I've only been doing this for a couple, couple seconds here. It does not have to be perfect at this stage. We have lots of time left in this process to get it really nicely shaped. So at this point in time, I'm going to um, split my dough because if I rise it all in just one bowl, it's going to probably overflow and be a real mess. So our next step is to put this into a bowl for its big rise. So this will be about an eight hour rise. I'm gonna, sometimes I'll do this at night. I'll make my dough at night and then rise it all night. But today, I'm starting it first thing in the morning so that I can bake it this evening. So we're gonna rise during the day. I'm gonna split my bowl, bowl, wow, split my dough into two bowls and then it's gonna rise. And one trick that I have learned is that our two towels here that we're gonna cover it with, if you make those damp before you cover, you end up um, keeping your, your dough more moist and it doesn't get like this crispy layer out on the outside. I really struggled with that when I first started doing sourdough. So there's a fun tip. I need to find my dough scraper or a knife. We're just gonna use a knife. So I'm gonna split this dough as close to right in half as I can. If you're curious, uh, cutting dough, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Again, I'm not an expert. You're learning right along with me. So I'm just gonna kinda Bring that together a little bit now that I cut it. All right. I'm gonna drop just a little bit of flour in the fresher bowl I have here. And drop her in. Okay, this bowl already has flour in it because it's the bowl that I mixed in. So I don't need to worry about that. I'm just kind of bring together that little area there. In the bowl. And I didn't do this ahead of time, so oops. Get it a little bit wet. And then you want to rise your dough in a warm spot. So you want to put your dough somewhere warm to rise. If it's too cold, it will take more time to rise or it won't rise at all. So I like to sometimes rise it in the oven. I just turn the oven light on. I don't turn the oven on. And that's just kind of a nice warm spot. Today, it's pretty sunny here. So I think I'm gonna put it by a window and let it rise near a window for its eight hours. So I'm gonna get this into a warm spot and I'll see you in eight hours for our next step. All right, now I'm happy with the consistency of my dough. It feels more right. So I'm gonna just let it sit in this bowl for 30 minutes. That's gonna be its first rest. So I'll cover it with a little clean tea towel just to keep it protected. And then I'm going to walk away for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna clean up my kitchen and then we're gonna come back and complete the next step. I have a little intermission. So I'm definitely not a professional and I'm still learning. Like I said, you're learning right alongside me. So I forgot a step in the recipe. I was supposed to, after the eight hour rise, shape the, bowl, the dough into a ball, let it rest on the counter for 15 minutes, and then put it in the basket to do its final proof. 
and I forgot. So we're gonna hope that the bread turns out still. I think it will. Uh, thankfully, bread can be fairly forgiving to some small mistakes and we'll see in a couple hours. So it's now doing its final rise for two to three hours, which I also misquoted, and then we're gonna bake. So thanks for following along and thanks for understanding that I make mistakes and we're all learning, no one's perfect. So see you at baking All right, time. welcome back. We are finally ready to bake. It's dark out, it's been a day of prepping for this, but we're finally ready to get it in the oven. So I'm gonna bake one of my loaves in a Dutch oven and the other loaf in a loaf pan because I don't have two Dutch ovens. Um, one little trick, trick that I learned is to use some cornmeal on the bottom of your Dutch oven to keep the bottom of your bread from scorching. So I just put a little bit of that in, shake it around, and then the parchment paper. There's my touch oven ready to go. So here is the loaf that's going to go in that. So it has risen beautifully. Look how big that is. It completely filled my basket. So this is going to make a beautiful loaf. Actually, it's easier to do it like this. So that was not my finest attempt. I clearly did not flour my Bannerton basket enough. So unfortunately, the top of my loaf probably isn't gonna be quite as pretty as it could have been. But we're gonna easily fix that. to score your bread. Beautiful rise. Hmm. I should have probably risen this in the loaf pan, but I didn't think of that. So we're working on the fly. This one isn't sticking as bad, so that's good. with the scoring. All right, so we'll see how this turns out. This is an experiment. Because this isn't going in a Dutch oven, I needed to create a little moisture. So I have a pan full of water that I'm going to put in the oven with it to create just a little bit of extra hydration. Now 
that's going to bake for about 50 minutes. I'll bake the Dutch oven half with the lid on and half with the lid off to get it nice and crusty and then we'll see how it went. This was some good, some bad in today's baking, but that's how sourdough goes. It's always just kind of an ever flowing flex of learning and growing and figuring out what works. So thanks for joining me on it. We'll see what the bread looks like. All right, welcome back to my kitchen. So uh, the bread got baked last night, so it's the next day and we're gonna see how it turned out. So this loaf um, didn't turn out quite as good as I would have liked. Um, usually it's a little rounder and a little fluffier, so we'll see what it looks like inside. And I'm sure it'll still taste good. All right, not too bad. Um, overall, the crumb looks good. It has a nice firmness, but still soft. And it smells fantastic. So. A little lower than my usual loaf, but overall not too shabby. And then this, the coloring is from the flour, so there's nothing wrong with the bread, just a little too much flour on the outside. All right, I am pretty pleased with that. Really nice, good flavor. And I think it'll taste just fine. So this was kind of an experiment. And just like always with sourdough, sometimes it doesn't go perfect, but usually the end result is still very tasty. So best of luck to all of you with your sourdough baking and, you know, enjoy. Life's too short to not eat bread. So have yourself some sourdough bread. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.